All right, all right. Uh, welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV. Sorry about that abrupt cutoff uh, yet again. Seems to be my calling card. Uh, but what I was trying to say was, I don't think I don't think I'm gonna get to any dungeons in this in the next recording, which is this recording. Uh, but after this set of cutscenes, I think we'll be positioned uh, in a way where, you know, as long as we don't start advancing the main story, it will make sense for us to have some time to go off and do a bunch of dungeons and uh, you know get all the side stuff for the 70 plateau done. So, after this video, after, uh, I mean, depending on how far it gets, uh, I don't have time to do a full hour, but, uh, depending on how far it gets, we'll see. Uh, should get about 40, 45 minutes in, and, uh, I mean, I don't, we don't have that much left, I don't think. Although, cutscenes, cutscenes happen. This is 4.2, and it was relatively short by comparison to, I think, 4.1. But don't quote me on that, because, again, it's Stormblood, and I can never remember exactly how long it will take for cutscenes to occur and transpire. Some such stuff. Well, the olds did it before. They can do it again. Also, you may have noticed my link shell is talking about some asinine hypothetical with Joe Rogan, Bigfoot, and a 16-inch dick. <sighs> but yeah, whatever. It's neither here nor there. White smoke? A smoke signal? Thoughts, you giddy? In former times, such signals were used to announce the coming of an emissary of peace. In Doma, at least. But could that truly be their intent? No. Who can say? Trojan horse. Whatever they want. We cannot simply blast them out of the sky. Not when they were so gracious as to honor one of our cherished traditions. I would not have it said that we Dormans want for propriety. Then I shall go and reconnoiter. Nay, that won't be necessary. We will meet them openly. The English voice actor for Hien has a real knack for this, like, dry, you know, satire, or, or dry sarcasm. I would welcome this student of Dorman history in person, whomsoever he or she may be. As you wish, my lord. I shall arrange for a signal of our own to be fired in answer. It's the white guy with his clenched fist. Well, that we should be received by the Lord of Dorma himself. I but afford an emissary of peace, the courtesy he is due. Welcome to Dorma, my lord. Ah, where are my manners? I am Asahi Sus Brutus, Ambassador Plenipotentiary of Garlemald. Hmm. He is heir to the Nayuri clan and Yotsu's stepbrother. It seems I need not introduce myself, not in the presence of the famed Yugiri Mistwalker. Your skills as a shinobi are known far and wide, my lady. It is true. The former acting viceroy is my sister. Yet, bonds of kinship aside, we have precious little in common. 
as will soon become plain, I come not to sow strife, but to end it. I am of the Populares, a collective which represents the interests of the common man. Long have we labored to bring about reform to the Empire's provincial policy. Happily for us, our master acknowledges the need for change. Indeed, his radiance, Emperor Varis Zos Galvus, personally sanctioned this mission, granting me the authority to speak with his voice. To negotiate peace with Dorma. I don't believe that for a nanosecond. Well then, we have much to discuss. Will you accompany me to my hall? Gladly, my lord. Now doesn't Asahi Asas Brutus look like a fucking snake? Because to me he looks like a snake. He's just got that kind of face that says, man, I should really just snap this guy's neck instead of listening to him talk. It's kind of funny, like Asahi's got a, a Garlean dude with, with him, Maxima, you know, he's he's got the third eye, but then he's got like an Ellison Conscript with him, and all I can really think is like, was the Ellison Conscript supposed to be a, uh, a pure blood Garlean too, and the, the dev team just got lazy, or was just like, nah, you know what, just fuck it, leave him a Conscript, we got better shit to do. Here we are in the Domen Enclave for the first time. Wait, no, actually, I guess this wouldn't be the first time. Well, it's the first time since we left it after the uh, reclamation, you know, of, of Doma. It's got its own Aetherite network, so we might as well pick that up. And I guess you can ride mounts here, but kind of forget about it. And it has its own little, like, daily side quest thing you can do for it. Or actually, I guess it's weekly. You you donate a bunch of items to it that are worth money. They pay you a small gratuity for them, which is basically double their sell price or whatever. And then uh, they use them towards their, their reclamation effort. I think it takes about seven weeks to... Uh, Maybe it was like 14 weeks to get it back into tippy top shape. Hakuro is that uh, that wolf man that we fought at the very end of Stormblood right before we stormed the palace. 
let's let's keep pushing on story. I'll go over Doman uh, Liberation at uh, when I have more time. Because that's also a side quest that is completely optional for some reason. <sighs> Looks a lot better than the last time I saw it. Courtesy of the Onishishu. Or is that Onishishu? I don't know. I don't know how to say it. I'll be there, man. I like you. We we went through the Nadam together. Or Nadam, or however the fuck they want to say it. <sighs> Damn right. Show me into that that Keon Khan. Kian can or Kian can. On behalf of my delegation, I offer you my humblest thanks. Never did I imagine that I would meet the gallant and noble Lord of Dorma himself, nor be welcomed into his magnificent hall. You'll forgive me if we forgo the pleasantries. You say you are come to negotiate peace. Unless I am mistaken, such negotiations are typically conducted between sovereign nations. I was not aware that the Emperor had recognized Dorma's sovereignty. His radiance has yet to do so, that much is true. Know, however, that he has expressed willingness to cede Dorma to her ancestral masters and treat with her as a friend. How very generous. Since the days of Emperor Solus, the Empire has aggressively expanded its territory. While you may not agree with our Founding Father's policy of expansion, I believe there is room for discussion on the matter of his lifelong goal, to rid the world of icons. Icons are a blight upon this star. They cannot be suffered to exist. This you know as well as we. In his wisdom, Emperor Varus wishes to explore the possibility of an alliance to combat this common threat. On the condition that Dorma renounces summoning and pledges to police the Corjin's practice of it, his radiance would extend the hand of friendship. Hmm. Dorma has never shown any appetite for summoning, and it should go without saying that we will address any threat to our people. Icon or otherwise. With regard to the Kojin, I must stress that they only resorted to summoning under extreme provocation. When the Ruby Sea was at peace and their sacred relics safe, they looked not to their Kami for protection. Yet even now there are certain parties who would destabilize the region with ill-conceived military forays. Unless they alter their course, we cannot hope to be rid of icons. Quite. I can but apologize. In seeking to eliminate icons, the Empire creates them. Tis an irony among ironies, one with which the people of Eorzea are well acquainted, I am told. Indeed, many summonings are the result of persecution. The weak being driven to call upon the divine for deliverance from the strong. So it was in Alamigo, the bitter fruit of Galian oppression. A tragic state of affairs. If we are to put an end to summoning once and for all, it shall not be through might, but harmony. 
Yet we continue to repeat our mistakes, oblivious to the lessons of history. You doing a soliloquy here, pal? My comrades and I would change all that. We, Populares, have campaigned long and hard for a shift in Imperial policy. And at last, the Emperor has seen fit to lend us an ear. Alas, there is a faction within Garlemald that would obstruct our every attempt at reform. A collection of pure-blooded Garlians who seek to consolidate their own supremacy. The Optimates. Hmm. Lest you wonder, theirs was the hand that loosed our forces on the Confederacy. T'was a regrettable incident, one that flies in the face of everything we believe. And I swear to do all in my power to prevent a reoccurrence. That would be most welcome. But if I may speak plain, if the Empire itself is not of one mind, how can we be certain that any peace we negotiate will be honored? I cannot blame you for doubting us. Indeed, I should find it strange if you did not. And so, in the name of building trust, I would like to make a proposal. A prisoner exchange. Hmm. Under Garlian rule, no few Dormans were conscripted into the Imperial Army. We would repatriate them in return for those of ours you captured in the recent conflict. Naturally, any exchange would include the acting Viceroy. Yotsu? What makes you think we have her? Forgive me, my lord. Was it not your wish to speak plain? Let us not play games. I desire only to work to our mutual benefit. The Optimates tried and failed to take my sister by force. I would succeed by peaceable means, thereby strengthening my party's hand. It would be a lie to say I would not also be glad of my sister's safe return. I'm pretty sure that is exactly 100% a lie. Hmm. A fellow plain speaker. How refreshing. Very well. Your proposal has merit, but I will need time to consider it. Of course, my lord. May we remain in Dorma until you have come to a decision? You shall be our honored guests. You giddy. I leave the ambassador and his retinue in your care. See that they are well looked after. You have our gratitude, Lord Hien. We shall look forward to your answer. Oh, come on. Clyde doesn't get bored that easy. Uh, but I suppose he is more of a murder machine than a politician.
And Alpha Nod just pretty much says the same thing. It's like, yeah, go, 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 I told you, go shoot my sister. I, I've got to ruminate on politics, baby. Grab this takoyaki. This forgotten home, huh? He's got a katana out. Hmm. Well, we shall see. We shall see what comes of it. Brief tour, huh? Are well, you trying to go on a date with Clyde? Don't you know you're a little young for him? Pleasure? Oh, uh. mm hmm. Just what an assassin would say. Whatever. Quest accepted. Ha ha ha. Of a beach. Not the Final Fantasy VI music they got going here, Cyan's theme. Love it. I got two older brothers in my. My older brother, Matt, his his favorite uh, section of Final Fantasy is always Final Fantasy VI and Doma Castle and the, the, uh, the Samurai, uh, Cyan, or in Japanese, Cayenne, but whatever. Cyan Garamond. That's telling me the elevation in yards, the distance to the marker. Whatever. That's uh, gonna be up, up a bit because she's gonna be staring at Doma Castle, I guess. Probably through that break in the wall right there. Maybe. I still want to know what these frickin' maggots are. I know they're a Final Fantasy VI reference as well to brain pans, but the fuck did they come from? What the fuck are they? <laughs> Ugh.
No, I, I don't. I don't. I don't care about that. Fate, please don't just automatically. I wish there was a setting for you to turn off fate music or whatever. There probably is, but it's buried somewhere deep. Oh, look, an instant battle. How about that? Well, let's just eat some food since, I mean, we might as well get a little bit of HP and some slight more bit of uh, damage dealing capability. That's a small boat. Is that where the instant battle takes place? That voice sounds vaguely familiar. Someone's in trouble. Uh oh, red Koji. Are you all right? Hi. What do they want with you? Yuki! And you lot too, I... I... I don't know, we were returning from the Enclave when they came at us! It seems they won't go quietly. And neither will we. Well, well, well. And again, usually in instance battles where they have NPCs taking part in them, uh, they give the monsters a lot more HP because they have certain ones you're supposed to be killing as sort of like objective-based gameplay. Leave this to me. Like these ones, for instance. Go ahead and refresh that guy. I'm opening early, but My forebears. Normally that you wouldn't be able to kill a captain by now, but we did. You can kind of see uh, Yugiri's, uh shades or her shadow bones, I guess. Oh, 
Ah, he seems like he's a decently skilled combatant. Versed in the way of the samurai. <sighs> that seems to be the last of them. You have nothing to fear, child. You are safe now. Thank you, sir. You saved us again. Thank you. If you're ever passing by our village, look us up. You'll always be welcome. Thank goodness we arrived when we did. Indeed. But what could have prompted the Red Codin to stray so far from the Ruby Sea? Imperial pay. I presume these are the cell swords hired by Yotsu. If so, the answer is simple. Desperation. Bereft of Imperial employment, they seek other means to line their coin purses. Another sad legacy of the Empire's mismanagement. Yeah, or you paid them. The Empire to which you have sworn allegiance. Must you always be so pointed? If we are to bring about lasting change, we must look beyond narrow allegiances. You have every right to doubt me, but in time, I hope you will come to see that we share a common goal. You and yours have fought fiercely to change the Empire from without, but if we are to end the cycle of conflict, the Empire must change from within. Am I wrong? I don't know if the Empire will never change. And now he's going to be like, But what about you and Ishgard? Never? I wonder, would you have said the same of Ishgard? Believe what you will. But I assure you, the Empire can change. Yeah, uh, it can go from being a bloodthirsty authoritarian dictatorship to being an even more bloodthirsty authoritarian dictatorship. But, you know. Seems legit, I suppose. Hopefully we can get these cutscenes finished up. Uh, is that inside or outside the Enclave? Okay, it's inside, I think. Whenever you see the quest marker on that dock over there, that usually means you have to go inside the Enclave, because that's the entrance point to the Enclave. Because you always have to take the boat. They don't just let you fly to the Enclave for some reason ever. It's kind of annoying, but whatever. Due to the nature of it being an instanced, uh, well, no, I guess it's not instanced because you can see other people there. Yeah. I'm telling you, he's just a good actor. Also, it's not really hard to be sincere when you want to protect a child. Most people aren't that monstrous. Probably the only villain we've encountered that could just straight up be like, eh, stupid kid. And not give a damn about him as Xenos. But he doesn't really give a damn about anything, so, you know, it's kind of like, whatever.
I still don't think he can be trusted. Well, often, empires that sue for peace basically try to make us make a mistake so they can justify reinvasion or whatever, or uh, you know, try to amp it up for their propaganda engines. So. It's laid heavy on your mind, huh? It's gonna involve Yatsu you? Probably gonna involve Yatsu you. I had her brought here in secret while the three of you kept our guest company. The world has not been kind to you, it is true. But that does not excuse your sins. You should be at the bottom of the river. Yet here you are. The living, breathing proof of my failure. A failure for which I would now make amends. What? What did I do? I don't remember. Was it really so terrible? Tell me, please! What did I do? You speak of sins, my lord. But at whose feet do those sins lie? With the soldiers who committed the crimes, or those who commanded them to do so? Both? With both, I would say. For all have a conscience, and all must choose. But with no memory of who she is, or what she has done, what sin remains to be cleansed? You ask that I show mercy? I ask... Why the heavens saw fit to deny me my rest? Why Yotsuyu was spared not only death, but the bitter memories of her life? You truly think it the will of the Kami? If so... Her life is not mine to take. It is yours to safeguard. Come the hour of the exchange. If her memories have not returned, she may remain here in Doma to live out her days as Tsuyu. But if they do, the Guardians shall have their Viceroy. Though the people will protest, they will come to accept my decision when they have been reunited with their loved ones. Thank you, my lord. Now then, I believe we have kept our guests waiting long enough. Did Gorsetsu not seem strange to you? His sympathy for your two, pardon me. I know his powers of endurance only too well, but after all he has suffered, even he should not be on his feet. He puts on a brave face for our sakes, but it would not surprise me if he lacked the strength to raise his blade. Though I suppose if he and your two are to enjoy a life of peace and quiet, he will have little use for it. It falls to us to shape that future. One in which he need never again set foot on the battlefield. So 
Seems legit. After all we've seen. Ugh. Okay, I'll go for for five to ten more minutes max, but Man, these cutscenes take longer than I remember them taking. But, oh well. Yeah, yeah, I'll see your business through. My apologies. Our deliberations took longer than expected. Think nothing of it. The time afforded me the opportunity to go on a rather rousing excursion through Yansha. You have reached a decision then? We are willing to cooperate with you in combating the Icon threat, and also in the exchange of prisoners. Assuming you accept our conditions, of course. As you know, your sister is in our care. Due to certain complications, however, we are hesitant to release her into your custody. Complications? She was inside Doma Castle when it collapsed. Though she survived, she remembers nothing of her past life, not even her name. To clarify, she is in our care not as a prisoner, but as a vulnerable citizen of Doma. Are you saying you refuse to release her? Not at all. If her memory returns before the appointed hour. And if not, what exactly? You will accommodate her here in Dorma? Well, I sincerely doubt she will be of any great strategic value to the Empire. She spends her days daydreaming of Dango. Dango? How dreadful. Very well. In light of our recent misstep in Sakazuki, it seems only fair that I show you the same understanding you have shown us. Though I do have one small request. Regardless of Yotsuyu's value to the Empire, she is yet my sister. Before I leave, might you permit me to speak with her in private? Of course. Perhaps you could even bring her a plate of dango. She would be most pleased. <laughs> you, Giri, will see you to her chambers. I really feel like Hien's English voice actor nailed it for the way the character is supposed to be. And even if he didn't, like, even if he's completely different in the Japanese voicing, this is the way I would prefer him, I think. Uh... It's dry satire, and then, then, you know, this glib demeanor when he's, you know, just like entertained by what he's thinking and saying. Seems legit. Okay, 
he's sort of become her father figure. Let's treat him to a proper farewell. Ugh, it's more than he deserves. It's a snake in the grass, I tell you. Pretty sure this is the ending uh, cutscene for 4.2. So we've almost made it all the way through 4.2 as far as the main story goes. We just have to please target the guy closest to me. Good lord. Is the game just going to take us there? Because that, that would be ideal. <sighs> I wish you a safe journey. This has been a most enjoyable visit. I look forward to our next meeting. The way that his voice actor just said that, it really made him sound like a uh, <laughs> very insincere. Uh, Maxima, would you take the others and see that all is ready for our departure? I simply cannot leave without first giving thanks to the Warrior of Light for accompanying me through Yancho. I'll allow it. Mark me, savior of the savages. There will be a reckoning. He mad. Now also, I want you to remember that we're standing like less than four feet away from like, what, four different people? And when we first met him, remember, Yugiri whispered to Hien, and he heard it from like the same distance away so him speaking to us like this you know a, a fully a fully audible you know you know I left to run traitor ignorant savages killing us will avail you not for every imperial you cut down a thousand more will come Abandon this foolish endeavor and surrender. You may yet serve our righteous cause. How dare you speak of righteousness? You who forsook kith and kin to serve conquerors. Be glad I grant you this mercy. Anyone get the number of that bus? What in the... <laughs> oh. It's that bus. Oh, look, he's wielding a gun blade. It looks so tiny in his hands. It's Garley and gun blade. Reinforcements? No, just one! Cut him down!
Thank you. Thank you, sir. This one is promising. Who remains to offer us resistance? A host of rebels led by Lord Kayen hold the Enclave across the river. Lord Kayen. The king of the... The former king of Dorma, sir. They say he is one of the greatest swordsmen alive. Is that what they say? Surely you jest. That was Xenos Ye Galvas, Legatus of the Twelfth, the Crown Bloody Prince. I heard he was strong, but that... that was frightening. That was... Lord Xenos. So this is definitely Arthur Fist guy. He's got a Xenos boner. Everything you are, your power, even your face, it vexes me. Your face vexes me, you shrimpy cuckold. Go on. Lash out like the beast you are at an emissary and jeopardize the newfound peace between Dorma and the Empire. My lord was destined to lead us unto a glorious new age. Your light is nothing to his radiance. Well, I mean, I, I, I killed him, so I, or I mean, I caused him to kill himself, so, you know. <sighs> I will cherish this moment, lock it away within my heart, until the day we meet again. What a chode. And nobody heard that. Nobody. <sighs> nobody thought saying, hey. And it was gone into the mist. Well, I had an echo vision where I saw that he was a bloodthirsty Xenos worshipper. Seriously, none of you heard it? None of you, none of you heard a damn thing? You look troubled, my friend. Was it something he said? He got all angry and psycho. Of all the memories to witness. I had my doubts about him, but I would never have guessed he was a disciple of Xenos. My lord. Calm yourself, you giddy. I set no store by him or his enlightened brethren. But if by treating with them there is even the faintest hope we might secure the return of our conscripted brothers and sisters, I must play this game. After the way I risked their lives in the rebellion, I owe them that much. My lord, you bear no blame for their fate. If not blame, then responsibility. They were prisoners, and still I chose to fight, knowing they could be executed in retaliation. I feel like they've changed Tian's model down to Midlander. But now we have a chance to bring them home. If it means bargaining with a monster, 
So be it. His beefy arm looks a lot less beefy in this scene. My lord. Besides, I think he likes me. Which is more than some can say. <laughs> Clyde's like, oh man. Sorry if I'm going through this a little fast. It's not voice acted, so uh, you can pause it if, if I've gone through it too fast. I'm just, I'm already over time here. I said I wasn't going to record this long, and yet here we are. Well, we'll go back to Kugane, and then we'll go ahead and stop after we load in. I just wanted to get to a nice stopping place. You know, I wanted the preamble of events to end because next video I plan on starting it off with dungeons, basically. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna start hammering out dungeon after dungeon after dungeon. Um, seems as good a time as any. Probably start with Hell's Lid. Uh, but we'll see. So, anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, stay safe and have a good day.